The murder of Furuta Junko in Japan, where four teenage boys abducted a high school girl on her way home in November 1988 and locked up, violated, and tortured her for four months before eventually killing her, is said to have traumatized the country for how cruel it was. The so called concrete encased high school girl murder case, as her body was discovered in a concrete drum, also shocked the world. There was a very similar case here in Korea as well. It's a case where 15 year old middle school girls conspired with men in their early to mid 20s to carry out the crime. The cruel way the crime was carried out and the young age of the assailants made people very angry. How the girl students harassed their peers in unimaginable ways shocked the nation and made people wonder if our juvenile criminal justice system was emboldening teenagers to indulge in heinous crimes. The description of today's case could be disturbing, so viewer discretion is highly advised. Today's case is the Korean version of the Junko case, the case of the concrete high school girl in Kime. At 2 p.m. on March 15th, 2014, a 15 year old girl surnamed Yoon abruptly ran away from home. At the time, she had just entered high school and was adjusting to a new environment for about 10 days. She had met Kim, a 24 year old guy, on a smartphone messenger service. Kim messaged Yoon often and proposed that they date. Yoon, who was naive, accepted this. Up until this point, she did not know Kim had something else in mind. Through Kim, she met three girls her age, surnamed Ha, Yang, and Chong, and the one girl who was 16 years old, also surnamed Yang. These four teenage girls hung out with Kim and his friends, who were also in their 20s. A guy surnamed Lee, a 24 year old guy surnamed Ha, and another guy surnamed Lee who was 25 years old. So on that day on March 15th, Yoon ran away from home with Kim and is said to have stayed at a motel in Busan. From then, Kim and his friends began to show their true colors. They started making Yoon engage in prostitution with guys she met through online chatting. The guys used that money for living expenses, including for entertainment purposes. Yoon was intimidated by them and had no choice but to do as she was told. When she didn't return home, Yoon's father reported to the police that she ran away from home. Kim, who was scared that he would be discovered somehow, took Yoon home momentarily. Kim and his friends urged Yoon not to tell her family or anyone that they had forced her into prostitution. Yoon's father asked his daughter, who had returned home after 14 days with a haggard complexion, what had happened to her. She cried and told him in detail These older guys forced me into prostitution. They locked me up and gave me only one meal a day. They told me that they would come and take me away if I told anyone what happened. When her father heard this, he tried to persuade his daughter to report it to the police. But she stopped him, telling him these older guys are scary. Yoon and her father, who were devout Christians, went to church the next day, as it was a Sunday. They attended different worship services, as they are separated according to age. Around noon, after the services were over, Yoon's father came out and realized his daughter was missing. He went to the police station and told officers, My daughter has disappeared. When she ran away from home, some guys and teens her age forced her into prostitution. Police reformed their search team and looked for Yoon. But during the 20 days that police looked for her, she was dragged around by Kim and his friends and she endured unimaginable torture. Let's take a look at what happened to Yoon during those 20 days. The guys once again forced her into prostitution. They connected her to men who paid for sex, and Yoon sold her body between four to eight times a day. From April 4th, they started indiscriminately beating up Yoon. That's because she logged into Facebook 
At 10.30 p.m. on April 4th at a motel in Ulsan, the group of guys found out that Yoon had accessed her Facebook account and they started punching her out of fear that their location had been exposed. They punched and kicked Yoon that night. Then they made seven girl students take turns watching Yoon after locking her up. As the days went by, their attacks and abuse got worse. They poured two bottles of soju into a bowl and made Yoon drink it all at once. If she threw up, they made her lick up her vomit and eat it. Three of the guys made four girl students fight with Yoon one by one, telling Yoon that she would be allowed out if she won. One of the guys, 25-year-old Lee, the oldest in the group, made Yoon bend her head back and he powerfully hit her larynx with the edge of his hand multiple times. He also used an electric fan and struck her torso with it several times. The girl students, meanwhile, threw furniture at Yoon. She was hit so much that her body felt sore, so she pleaded with them to pour some water on it. So, one of them boiled water in a pot and poured it all over Yoon's arms and legs. She sustained burns and her skin started to peel. Whenever she said, I wanted to go home, she was beaten all over. They made her stand up and sit down some 100 times. They made her memorize a multiplication table in her semi-conscious state. And when she didn't respond, they hit her more. She was in a serious state where she couldn't even eat. At 10 p.m. on April 9th, three of the guys and one of the girl assailants surnamed Yang took Yun for a ride in a car. They stopped near an industrial complex in the Taeso district of Daegu to play a game of omok. The loser had to beat Yun, who was balled up on the floor of the back seat. During their ride in the car, they asked Yun for fun. If you die, who would you like to take with you? Yoon chose 25-year-old Lee, the older guy in her group of attackers. Mad when he heard this, Lee punched her and beat her with his heels. Yoon then chose the girl, surnamed Yang, and when she heard this, she grabbed a piece of the pavement and struck Yoon with it. The next day, on April 10th, in the back seat of a car parked near a hotel in Daegu, she suffered a sudden cardiac arrest from her injuries and took her last breath. When the group found her dead, they were scared they would be discovered. They drove the car to Changyong County in South Gyeongsang Province. They parked the car along a random street, poured gasoline all over Yun's face, and set it ablaze. They wanted to make her face unrecognizable, so that if she was found, their arrest would be delayed. At 2 a.m. on April 11th, two of the guys and a girl's student accomplice went to an orchard in Changyong County to dump Yoon's body. They dug a hole using a shovel and pickaxe and pushed her body into it. Yoon's face was blackened as they have poured gasoline on it and set it on fire to make it unrecognizable. Then they covered her body with dirt. But the group was worried about the place where they buried Yoon along a random street and so they went back to the site three days later and dug up the body. At 2 a.m. on April 14th, they took the body to a hill near the Hwanguk Bridge in Changyong County. They reburied Yun and poured cement all over her body. Then they covered it with dirt and added rocks and grass to better conceal the body. Surprisingly, a few days later, the group traveled to Daejeon and carried out another murder. On April 19th, the guys met a 47-year-old man in Daejeon surnamed Kim using a chatting app and forced the other girl's student surnamed Yang to have sex with him for money. They lured him into a motel in Bongmyeongdong in Daejeon's Yuseong district and told him, we will tell people that you had sexual relations with a minor to make him pay his way out. But Kim realized that it was a scam and tried to escape only to get beaten in front of the motel. The group of guys took him in a car to get money from him. He was beaten again and again, and one of the guys surnamed Ha got a large plastic flower pot that weighed around 20 kilograms and struck Kim's head with it. Even though he lost consciousness, they kept on kicking his head. 
Kim wasn't moving, and so they moved him to the backseat of the car and fled the area. Around three hours later, Kim pleaded for his life, but they kept on hitting him in the backseat. They used a lighter and cigarettes to burn his sides, all in an effort to get his credit card passcode so that they could withdraw money. Eventually, Kim died of his injuries in the car. They left the body in the car, abandoned the vehicle, and fled. Three days later, they were caught by police. Because of this case, three of the guys are named Lee, Ha, and the second Lee were arrested and sent to the Taejeon Detention Center. Police found out about Kim, the first guy to lure Yoon based on phone records. Police searched for Kim and soon arrested him. They looked into Kim and his friends and figured out they were already behind bars for another murder case in Taejeon. They also heard that teenage girls testified as witnesses in Taejeon that they took part in prostitution and returned to Kimhae. When police asked the girl students the whereabouts of Yoon, they said, we don't know anything and pretended not to know. Did they feel guilty? One of the girl students who returned home is said to have told her friend, I killed Yoon and we secretly buried her body. That friend thought what she heard was serious and reported it to the police. The three guys that killed Yoon were ex-cons. One of the guys carried out over 20 crimes and all three had one or two convictions. A detective with the Kimei police station that was in charge of this investigation said he had never seen such heinous crimes involving young students. The detective is said to have simply told Yoon's father that his daughter had died without giving him all the details, as it could have been a shock to him. How did the court rule on this case? There were two trials, one in Changwon and the other in Taejeon, as there was the burglary murder case in Taejeon soon after Yoon's body was buried on the hill. On November 11, 2014, the Taewon District Court handed down sentences to the three girl students who were involved in Yoon's assault and death. Yang got between six to nine years in prison, while both Ha and Chong got between six to eight years behind bars. According to the Korean Juvenile Act, when a juvenile gets sentenced to a prison term of two or more years, a sentence has to specify the maximum and minimum terms, meaning that the offender has to serve the minimum term but can get released on parole after that. The accused girls claimed they were forced to carry out those acts by the guys. The judge did acknowledge that the girl students were both assailants and victims but convicted them as they didn't do anything to stop Yoon's death, even though they knew that she could die. Then there's Kim, the first guy to meet Yoon on the chatting app. Kim said he didn't directly take part in the assaults, but he was sentenced to five years in prison on charges of luring a minor for the purpose of prostitution and aiding and abetting the abandonment of a dead body. But in April 2015, during an appeals trial, Ha and Chong received reduced sentences. The court took into consideration the fact that they grew up in substandard environments. They had a lack of social safeguards, and they showed remorse for what they did. Kim also received a reduced sentence of three years. Meanwhile, on February 13, 2015, the Taejeon District Court indicted two of the guys, surnamed Lee and Ha, saying they were the principal offenders who actively took part in Yoon's assaults and sentenced them to life in prison. Another guy, surnamed Lee, who was indicted with the other two guys, received 35 years behind bars. They all claimed they didn't have any intentions to kill Yoon. They were suffering from impulse control disorders and they were under the influence of alcohol, all of which were not acknowledged. They appealed their sentences, but the Taejeon High Court dismissed them on July 24th. This brutal case involving teenagers and youth shocked the country. The guys in their 20s and the teenage girls who conspired with them will have to live with this memory for the rest of their lives. One thing we should point out here is that young girls and women who run away from home often get involved with prostitution. Yoon's classmates told reporters that they were sure her being lured by the guys and the girl students was premeditated and that she was targeted. 
Her classmates described Yun as someone who was shy and quiet and difficult to get to know. Basically, naive teenagers could become easy targets. The accused girl's students were runaways themselves and engaged in some kind of prostitution as well. Before anything else, it's important that we make sure there are social safeguards in place to keep our youth safe and out of harm's way. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.